because I haven't gone live. Okay, so I'm going live. Okay, starting again, just in case. Okay, so what I'm doing tonight, I'm looking at flashbacks and complex PTSD. And, and all right, so I wasn't sure if I've gone live or not, so I have. So what I'm gonna do is share my screen. Um, if you can see here, and what I'm going to do is read some slides that's going to give some psychoeducation to understand what flashbacks are, because what we've got is um, a society that's not really getting the truth of what anxiety is. A lot of people are walking around with um, complex PTSD. Most people, you know, probably half the population or more. We all have trauma that's happened in our lives that's not been resolved or been processed. And a lot of people in, you know, certain sex, like not sex, but sex in certain parts of, you know, like on social media and stuff like that, people are turning to all different sorts of modalities to try and heal this. And also we've got people that, you know, turn to spirituality, they try and surrender early trauma and it's not really, it doesn't really help because people don't understand what's going on. So as I read through these slides, it will come to light what um, complex PTSD is and how we manage the aspects of it by understanding psychoeducation, by understanding what the reality is. So I'm going to show you the first slide. I've got nobody on here at the moment. I don't know if I've got any viewers. I've got nobody on live chat, but I've got one. Let me see. So should I share it out? Maybe I'll share it on my Facebook page. And then, whoops, go back, go live. So I'm here, but what I'm going to be doing is reading through these slides so people have no doubt what complex PTSD is. And in that, they'll be able to help themselves. And it's very difficult for most people because most people will have been through trauma and have not even spoken about their trauma or they're too, they've got, they're full of toxic shame and they're afraid to speak about their trauma. And it applies to physical abuse, sexual abuse, verbal abuse in childhood. And it's hard for many, many people. So. By reading this, the whole purpose is some psychoeducation from Pete Walker's um, book and webpage on complex PTSD. So I'm going to go for it. So what we have, he he said on his webpage, and the link will be below, that the point of this um, understanding, and I'm going to start reading if I organize myself. Okay. So what I've got is. This paper describes a trauma typology for dif differentially, sorry, excuse my words, diagnosing and treating complex post-traumatic stress disorder. This model elaborates four basic defensive structures that develop out of our instinctive fight, flight, freeze, fawn responses to se sever, sever, sorry, abandonment and trauma heretofore referred to as the four Fs. So we got fight, flight, freeze, fawn, and it's quite helpful that it's called the four Fs so we can, you know, relate to that. He says variances in the childhood abuse, neglect pattern, birth order and genetic predispositions result in individuals choosing and specializing in narcissistic fight, obsessive compulsive flight, dissociative freeze or codependent fawn defenses. Many of my clients have reported that psychoeducation in this model has been motivated, motivational, de-shaming, and pragmatically helpful in guiding their recovery. So that as we understand this, we then will stop suffering hours and days of um, fight, flight, freeze, fawn. And it is education. It, that is what helped me. I used to spend like weeks, days, and you know, probably months in my own defense, my own defense. And in that defense, I basically suffered and we will see how this plays out. And um, you can basically figure out what type you may be. So if any, if there's any chat there, then feel free to chat if anybody comes on. 
So what we've got, let's read away and get to the bottom of this. So he says, individuals who experience good enough parenting in childhood arrive in adulthood with a healthy and flexible response repertoire to danger. In the face of real danger, they have appropriate access to all their four F choices. Easy access to the fight response ensures good boundaries, healthy assertiveness, and aggressive self-protectiveness if necessary. Untraumatized individuals also easily and appropriately access their flight instinct and disengage and retreat when the confrontation would exasperate their danger. They also freeze appropriately and give up and quit and struggle in when further activity or resistance is futile or counterproductive. And finally, they also fawn in a liquid play space manner and are able to listen, help and compromise as readily as they assert and express themselves and their needs, rights and points of view. Those who are repetitively traumatized in childhood, however, often learn to survive by over-relying on the use of one or two of the four F responses. Fixation in any one four F response not only delimits the ability to access all others, but also severely impairs the individual's I've got ability to relax into an undefended state, circumscribing him in a very narrow, impoverished experience of life over time. A habitual 4F defense also serves to distract the individual from the accumulating unbearable feeling of her current alienation and unresolved past trauma. Okay, so slide two. Let's see there. Okay, I've got... Next slide. Okay, so complex PTSD as an attachment disorder. And this is psychoeducation for anybody who comes on to watch this because we all heal with the more knowledge that we have about the fight, flight, freeze form response. So he says complete PTSD and as an attachment disorder. Polarization to a fight, flight, freeze form response is not only the developing child's unconscious attempt to obviate danger, but also a strategy to purchase some illusion or modicum of attachment. All four Fs are commonly ambivalent about real intimacy because deep relating so easily triggers them into pain painful emotional flashbacks. And he says, see my article, The East Bay Therapist, September, October 05, Flashback Management in the Treatment of Complex PTSD. Emotional flashbacks are instant and sometimes prolonged regressions into the intense, overwhelming feeling states of childhood abuse and neglect, fear, shame, alienation, rage, grief, and or depression. Habited 4F defenses offer protection against further reabandonment hurts by precluding the type of vulnerable relating that is prone to re-invoke childhood feelings of being attacked, unseen, and un unappreciated. Fight types avoid real intimacy by unconsciously alienating others with their angry and controlling demands for the unmet child, childhood need of unconditional love. Flight types stay perpetually busy and industrious to avoid potentially triggering interactions. So actually, I see myself there that I go into um, flight and myself and I stay very busy to avoid potentially triggering interactions. Freeze types hide away in their rooms and reveries and fawn types avoid emotional investment and potential disappointment by barely showing themselves. So what he's, you know, what we get here is that we can bounce in, in and out of these. The four Fs are normal and are healthy, but when people have been through abuse, they attach to one or two of the, of the four Fs. So then he says that, where are we? Emotional investment and potential, okay. By hiding themselves and their helpful personas over listening, over eliciting or overdoing for the other by giving service, but never risking self exposure and the possibility of deeper level rejection. Here then are four, are further descriptions of the four F's defense with specific recommendations for treatment. All types additionally need and benefit greatly from the multidimensional treatment approach described in the article above. And he says where that is. And he says shrinking the inner critic in complex PTSD. So that's something we have to do. We have to 
get to a point where we're shrinking our inner critic to begin with. And that begins to work on the stopping the, these overactive responses to the fight, flight, freeze, fawn response. And he says, which describes 13 toxic super egoic processes of perfectionism and endangerment that dominate the psyches of four F types in varying ways. So next slide. I've got one watching at the moment. But that's okay, we just keep going because this is going to be useful to somebody out there. So let's have a look. So he says the flight type and narcissistic defense. And this is what he explains. He says the fight types are unconsciously driven by the belief that power and control can create safety, a soothe, I think that's right, abandonment and secure love. Children who are spoiled and given insufficient limits a uniquely painful type of abandonment and children who are allowed to imitate the bullying of a narcissistic parent may develop a fixated fight response to being triggered. These types learn to respond to their feelings of abandonment with anger and subsequently use contempt, a toxic amalgam of narcissistic rage and disgust to intimidate and shame others into mirroring them and into acting as extensions of themselves. The entitled fight type commonly uses others as an audience for his incessant monologizing and may treat a captured freeze or fawn type as a slave or prisoner in a dominant submission relationship. Especially devolved fight types may become sociopathic ranging along a continuum that stretches between corrupt politician and this vicious criminal. So next slide. Okay, so what he explains here is that this is how we begin to heal this. So this is the treatment for that particular type. Okay, he says treatable fight types benefit from being psychoeducated about the prodigious price they pay for controlling others with intimidation. Less injured types are able to see how potential intimates become so afraid and or resentful of them that they cannot manifest the warmth or real like, real liking the fight type so desperately desires. He says, I have helped a number of fight types understand the following downward spiral of power and alienation. Excessive use of power triggers a fearful emotional withdrawal in the other which makes the fight type feel even more abandoned and in turn more outraged and contemptuous, which then further distances the intimate, which in turn increases their rage and disgust, which creates increasing distance and withholding a warmth ad infinitum. Fight types need to learn to notice and renounce their habit of instantly morphing abandonment feelings into rage and disgust. As they become more conscious of their abandonment feelings, they can focus on their feeling, feeling their abandonment, fear and shame without transmuting it into rage or disgust and without letting grandiose overcompensations turn into demandingness. He says, unlike other four Fs, fight types assess themselves as perfect and project the inner critic's perfectionistic processes onto others guaranteeing themselves as endlessly supply of justifications to rage. Fight types need to see how their condescending moral high ground position alienates others and perpetrates their present time abandonment. Learning to take self-initiated timeouts at the first sign of triggering is an invaluable tool for them to acquire. Timeouts can be used to accurately redirect the lion's share of their hurt feelings into grieving and working through their original abandonment rather than displacing it destruct destructively onto current intimates. Furthermore, like all 4F fixations, fight types need to become more flexible and adaptable in using the other 4F responses to perceive danger, especially the polar opposite and complementary form response described below. They can learn the empathy response or the form position imagining how it feels to be like the other, and in the beginning, fake it until they make it. Without real consideration for the other, without reciprocity and dialogue, sorry, the real intimacy they crave will remain unavailable to them, okay? 
So if you're watching, I'm reading on the fight, fight, flee, freeze, phone response um, and helping people understand the, the what happens with um, people who have um, fight, fight, PTSD, complex PTSD. Okay. So what we've got now, sorry, I've squeezed some lemon juice into my water and I'm swallowing a pip, nearly did. Okay, so now I, here I go. The fight type and the obsessive compulsive defense. This is really useful knowledge. Flight types appear as if they, if their starter button is stuck in the on position. They are obsessively and compulsively driven by the unconscious belief that perfection will make them safe and lovable. As children, flight types respond to their family trauma somewhere along a hyperactive continuum that stretches between the extremes of the driven A student and the ADHD dropout running amok. They relentlessly flee the inner pain of their abandonment and lack of attachment with the symbolic flight of, flight of the constant busyness. When the obsessive compulsive flight type is not doing, she is worrying and planning about doing. Flight types are prone to becoming addicted to their own adrenalization and many recklessly and regularly pursue risky and dangerous activities to keep their adrenaline high going. These types also are as success, susceptible to stimulating substance addictions as they are to their favorite process addictions, workaholism, busyholism. Severely traumatized flight types may devolve into severe anxiety and panic disorders. So what he's saying here is that, that people who generally have panic disorders and severe anxiety, they're acting out the fight, flight type response. Excuse me. Next slide. Okay, so the recovery for this is this is what it's going to be for that type. Many flight types are so busy trying to stay one step ahead of their, their pain that introspecting out loud in their therapy hour is the only time they find to take themselves seriously. While psychoeducation is important and essential to all the types, flight types particularly benefit from it. Nowhere is this truer than in the work of learning to deconstruct their over-identification with the perfectionistic demands of their inner critic. Gently and repetitively confronting denial and minimization about the costs of perfectionism is essential, especially with the workaholics who often admit their addiction to work but secretly hold on to it as a badge of pride and superiority. Deeper work with flight types as with all types, gradually opens them up to grieving their original abandonment and all its con concomitant losses. Egocentonic crying is an unparalleled tool for shrinking the obsessive perseverations of the critic and for helping the habit of compulsive rushing. A recovery progress, flight types can acquire a gearbox that allows them to engage life at a variety of speeds, including neutral. Flight types also benefit from using mini minute meditations to help them identify and deconstruct their habitual running. I teach such clients to sit comfortably, systematically and relax, breathe deeply with the diagram and ask themselves questions such, what is my most important priority right now? And ask themselves questions such, we just said that, or when more time is available. What hurt as I am running, what hurt am I am running from right now? Can I open up to the heart of the idea and the image of soothing myself in my pain? Finally, there are numerous flight types who exhibit symptoms that are must may be misperceived as cyclo cyclomythic, I haven't got that, bipolar disorder. I address this issue at length in my article, Managing Abandonment Depression in Complex PTSD. Okay, next slide. So the freeze types, he says, many freeze types unconsciously believe that people and danger are synonymous and that safety lies in solitude. Outside of fantasy, many give up entirely on the possibility of love. The freeze response is also known as the camouflage response. 
often triggers the individual into hiding, isolating, and eschewing human contact as much as possible. This type can be so frozen in the retreat mode that it seems as if their starter button is stuck on off position. It is use, usually the most profoundly abandoned child, the lost child who is forced to choose and habitate into the freeze response, the most primitive of the four Fs. Unable to successfully employ fight, flight or fawn, which allows them to disconnect from experiencing his abandonment pain and protects him from risky social interactions, any of which might trigger feelings of being really re-abandoned. Freeze types often present as ADD and they seek refuge and comfort in prolonged bouts of sleep, daydreaming and wishing and right brain dominant activities like the TV, computer and video games. They master the art of changing the internal channel whenever inner experience becomes uncomfortable. When they are especially traumatized or triggered, they may exhibit a schizoid like detachment from ordinary reality. So next slide. So this is the healing, you know, remedy for that type, which is the fight, flight, freeze type. So he says here, there are three reasons why freeze types are the most difficult for F defense to treat. First, their positive relational experiences are few, if any, and they are therefore extremely reluctant to enter the relationship of therapy. Moreover, those who manage to overcome this reluctance often spook easily and quickly terminate. Second, they are harder to psychoeducate about the trauma basis of their complaints because like many fight types, they are unconscious of their fear and their torturous inner critic. Also, like the freeze type, the, type, the freeze type tends to project the perfectionist demands of the critic onto others and rather others rather than the self and use the imperfections of others as a justification for their own isolation. The critic process of perfectionism and endangerment eventually unconscious in freeze types must be made conscious and deconstructed as described in my detail in my aforementioned article on shrinking the inner critic. So shrinking the inner critic is a list that will be below this video. You'll be able to click on it. And um, the, the 13 steps for managing flashbacks as well is below this video and Pete Walker's website where I got this from. So where did I get to? So he says, in shrinking the inner critic. Third, even more than workaholic flight types, freeze types are in denial about the life narrowing consequences of their singular adaption. Because of the freeze response is on a continuum that ends with the collapse response, the extreme abandonment of consciousness seen in prey animals about to be killed. Many appear to be able to self-medicate by releasing the eternal opioids that the animal brain is programmed to release when danger is so great that death seems imminent. The opioid production of this of the collapse or extreme freeze response can only take the individual so far, however, and these types are therefore prone to sedating substance addictions. Many self-medicating types are often drawn to marijuana and narcotics while others may gravitate toward ever escalating regimes of antidepressants and anxiolytics. Moreover, when they are especially unremeditated and unattached, they can devolve into increasing depression and in worst case scenarios, into the kind of mental illness described in the book, I never promised you a rose garden. So next slide, fawn types. This is the fourth type of the four Fs, fight, flight, freeze, fawn. He says, fawn types seek safety by merging with the wishes, needs, and demands of others. They act as if they unconsciously believe the price of admission to any relationship is the full future of their needs, rights, preferences, and boundaries. And they often begin life like the precocious children described in Alice Miller's The Drama of the Gifted Child, who learn about a modicum of safety and attachment. And attachment can be gained by becoming the helpful and compliant servants of their parents. And people may relate to one or two of these when they're reading this, what types they are. They are usually the children of at least one narcissistic parent who uses contempt to press them into service, scaring and shaming them out of developing a healthy sense of self, an egoic locus of self-protection, self-care and self-compassion. 
This dynamic is explored at length in my East Bay Therapist article, and he says that's January, February, 2003, Codependency, Trauma, and the Form Response. And it says, see his website here, so you can visit that, um, www.petewalker.com forward slash petewalker.com. Um, he says, form types typically respond well to being psychoeducated in this model. This is especially true when the therapist persists in helping them recognize and renounce the repetition compulsion that draws them to narcissistic types who exploit them. Therapy also naturally helps them to shrink their characteristic listening defense as they are guided to widen and deepen their self-expression. I have seen numerous invertebrate codependents finally progress into their assertiveness and boundary making work when they finally have got that even the thought of expressing a preference or needs triggers as emotional flashback of such intensity that they completely disassociate from their knowledge of the and the ability to express what they want. Role-playing assertiveness in this session and, and attending to the stullifying inner critic processes, it triggers, helps the codependent build a healthy ego. This is especially true when the therapist in, interprets, witnesses and validates how the individual as a child was forced to put to death so much of her own individual self. Grieving these losses further potentiates the developing ego. Okay, so trauma hybrids. He says there are, of course, few pure types, meaning that we're not just one of those types of the four Fs, we're doing one or two of those. And, you know, it's healthy that we do all four, you know, you've got the healthy fight, flight, freeze, form response, and then you've got the trauma a fight, flight, freeze, form, response. So trauma hybrids, there are of course few pure types. Most trauma survivors are hybrids of the four Fs. There are, for instance, three subsets of the fawn type, the fight, the fawn flight, fawn fight, the smothering mother type who coercively or manipulatively takes care of others, who smothers love them into conforming with her view, of who they should be, the fawn flight type who workaholically makes herself useful to others, the model, like he says, secretary, in the vein of her favorite role, model, Mother Teresa, and the free, fawn freeze type who numbingly surrenders herself to scapegoating or to a narcissist's need to have a target for his rageaholic releases, the classic domestic violence victim. Space in this article only allows for description of the two other common hybrids, the fight, fawn, and the flight, freeze. I'm going to continue reading. So the flight, fawn, perhaps the most relational hybrid and most susceptible to love addiction, combines two opposite but magnetically attracting polarities of relational style, narcissism and codependence. This defense is sometimes misdiagnosed as borderline because the individual's flashback trigger a panicky sense of abandonment and a desperation for love that causes her to dramatically split back and forth between fighting and clawing for love and cunningly or in flatten, flatteringly, sorry, between groveling for it. This type is different than the fawn flight fight in that the narcissistic's defense is typically more in ascendancy. The fight fawn hybrid is more distinct from a more common condition where an individual acts like a fight type in one relationship while fawning in another. The archetypal henpecked husband who is a triant at work and from many nice, mildly codependent people who have critical masses where they will eventually get fed up and blow up about injustice and exploitation. The borderline like fight fawn type, however, may dramatically facilitate back and forth between these two styles many times in a single interaction. So this is for psychoeducation. Um, so we're nearly done, I think, but I'm gonna continue reading. He says the fight freeze type is the least relational and most schizoid hybrid, this type avoids his feelings and potential relationship re-traumatization with an obsessive, compulsive, disassociative, 
two-step that severely narrows his existence. The flight freeze cul-de-sac is more common among men, especially those traumatized for being vulnerable in childhood, and those who subsequently learn to seek safety in isolation or intimacy-like rela like relationships. Many non-alpha males, type males, gravitate towards the combination of flight and freeze defenses, stereotypical of the information technology nerd, the computer addict who workaholically focuses on long periods of time and then drifts off disassociatively into computer games. Many sex addicts also combine the flight and freeze in a compulsive pursuit of a sexual pseudo intimacy. When in flight mode, they obsessively scheme to get sex and or compulsively pursue and or engage in when in freeze mode, they drift off into a, off into a right brain sexual fantasy world that is often fueled by an addictive use of pornography and even during real-time sexual interaction, they often engage with their idolized fantasy partner than with their actual partner. Whoops. Self-assessment. So this is where you can do your own self-assessment, but clearly, you know, I'm not a medical um, doctor or practice, you know, I'm not medical um, trained. I'm basically reading and helping people understand um, the, from the complex PTSD book from Surviving to Thriving, and people who have su who are suffering from complex PTSD. That's what I'm doing. So this is in the book, and clearly you would have to go to your doctors and get more information. You, we can't be labeling ourselves. This is um, to really see, you know, to psychoeducate ourselves and, you know, not label ourselves, but begin to understand the bigger picture of childhood trauma. So he says, self-assessment. Readers may find it informative to self-assess their own hierarchical use of the four F responses. They can try to determine their dominant type and hybrid and think about what percentage of their time is spent in each type of 4F activities. Finally, all 4F progressively recover from the multidimensional wounding of complex PTSD as mindfulness of learned trauma dynamics increases. As the critic shrinks, as disassociation dis decreases, as childhood loses, losses are effectively grieved, as the healthy ego matures into a user-friendly manager of the psyche, as the life narrative becomes more ego cytonic, as emotional vulnerability creates authentic experiences of intimacy, and as good enough, safe enough attachments are attained. Furthermore, it is also important to emphasize that recovery is not an all or none phenomenon, but rather a gradual one marked by decreasing frequency, intensity, and duration of flashbacks. So let's see. Okay. Um, Self-assessment readers may find it informative to self-assess their own hierarchical use of the four Fs. So he, I've already read that, I think. I don't know why it's there twice. Good enough, safe enough. Okay, next slide. Um, what I've got here now is um, 13 steps for managing flashbacks. So if you have CPTSD or PTSD, these are 13 steps that you can help or read. And the list is below, so you'll be able to click on the link below the video where it says the 13 steps for managing flashbacks. And you'll be able to then use that, you know, as a PDF, print it off, have it with you, and you'll be able to begin to manage your flashbacks. So 13 steps here. I don't think I'm going to read them all, but we can just, you know, step put through, go through the first one. The first one is say to yourself, I'm having a flashback. Flashbacks take us, because flashbacks take us into that timeless part of the psyche that feels as helpless, hopeless, and surrounded by danger as we were in childhood. The feelings and sensations you are experiencing are past memories and they cannot hurt you now. So, you know, the first thing is, is that if you're having a flashback, when you say, when you understand you're having one and you say, I'm having a flashback, you'll begin to, you know, get to a place where we stop having them. So I'm going to come out of this now and stop my share. Okay. So I hope this is really useful to anybody out there. It's a bit, you know, maybe a bit monotonous for people like reading this, but, or me, you know, me just reading slides, but I do feel that, you know, the books that you can get this, um, the complex PTSD from Surviving to Thriving by Pete Walker. And the other thing you can do is um, look at his book, The Dower Fully Feeling, 
which was an earlier book, but I can tell you from my own work that I've done on myself, the more I've understood the four Fs, which is the fight, flight, freeze, form response, and looked at how I handle myself and my life and with therapy as well, I'm beginning to recover bit by bit, day by day. And it's never all or nothing. So do remember that, um, that healing is not all or nothing and there's no one quick fix for complex PTSD. It's about psychoeducation and uh, and getting help. Okay, so let me see. I'm going to stop. But I'm going to stop, end my stream. And that's it for today. And I thank you for watching and I hope this has been useful.